Hello and welcome back to the West London Sport YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined today by a very special guest in QPR midfielder and captain Stephanie Hansen. Uh, Stefan, thanks so much for, for joining me today. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're talking off the back of a, a couple of defeats for QPR, but I mean, when you look back at the season overall and so far and how you've started, do you think you can be pleased with the level of performances you've been in, especially with some of the results you've picked up so far? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think we we... We have started well. Um, I think the two defeats were about, uh, now we, we played some good football. Uh, Bournemouth, we could have probably nicked a point in the end and the goalie made a few saves and we definitely felt we should have won the game on on, uh, on Saturday at home. So, But it's no excuse, you know, a small margin in football and um, we, we couldn't take them advantage and, and get them to our side. So that's things we have to work on. Yeah, and I gather there was a bit of uh, injury concern for yourself after Saturday as well. But from what your manager said this morning, it's nothing too serious, nothing to worry about, just a bit of, of cramp, right? Yeah, no, I just felt it. But, but it's, you know, it's, it's been three games in a week now and uh, I haven't had that for a while. So, you know, it's um, it's probably like a, a result of that. But it's no no problem. So um, I'm, I'm fine to go. Yeah, so I think your manager said they were worried it was a hamstring at the um when it when it happened and he said he you think he said his heart sank so I suppose it's nice to be appreciated to know you'd be a loss if you were if that that was the case but I'm sure QPR fans everywhere would be pleased to hear that it's uh that it's not it's not the case um yeah I mean when you um go back to the summer obviously you you your loan spell ended and you were technically a still a, a Fulham player um, and I'm sure you had to kind of review your options and decide what you wanted to to do with your career. But was it always kind of your intention to um, to come back to QPR? And if I'm sure you had other sort of interested parties as well, what was the kind of swaying factor for you that made you want to come back? I think uh, definitely the loan spell I had there uh, before the summer, you know, um, the manager likes to play football like I think, which suits me quite well. Uh, I think it's a very talented squad. I think um, the club has showed ambitions and, and uh, you know, put, uh, yeah, signings into, big signings into the team and, and um, you know, made, made the squad even stronger. So I think it's, um, it can be an exciting season for us this, but for me personally, it was, you know, when, when I heard, like, the QPR deal could be done, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. So, it was just like, I think we, we suit each other well. And, you know, I, I've, I've always felt wel welcome from the club and the fans where, since I've been there. So, you know, it was a easy choice for me. Yeah, and obviously, not long after you came back, you were announced as the, the club's captain. Was that something that was discussed prior to the move or was it something that came about as a kind of a nice surprise for you or how did that kind of come about not really you know it's we jeff obviously uh, left um uh, this uh, summer so it was um he was the club captain but you know uh, lee has been the vice captain and um the gaffer just you know had a chat with me lee and, and probably a few others and thought like my experience from before with with norway and the, the clubs I've been in and stuff could could help uh, quite a young squad, so it's a responsibility I'm I'm happy to take. But as I said as well, when when I got got named captain, I think it's a lot of leaders in this team. We have uh, younger players, which is very good, like the likes of, for example, just to name one, Rob Dickey, which I think is taking big steps from last season. I have a uh, Ilias chair that that starting to speak more, and so. It's not about always having the armband, you know. I think if you're going to develop as a group, you have to have more players than one that that's going to lead lead us on. And um, I think we got plenty in this team. Yeah, and I think you can see that on the pitch as well. Like when you watch the games, there's you know yourself and like you said, Rob Dickey and a lot of others, kind of shouting out instructions. Obviously, there's quite a balance there, isn't there, between the experienced players you've got and then you've also got the younger players. It's quite gels together um, quite nicely there. Mm. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you spent quite a few years at um, Fulham. Uh, I'm sure some some very happy memories there. And um, but I'm just wondering, is it the way it kind of ended? Was there any kind of frustrations about how that happened? Obviously, I know 
he had some injury problems and then you spent a bit of time away from the squad. It was, how, how do you kind of reflect on that? Absolutely not. You know, I think Fulham will always be a big part of my career. I, I really like the club. You know, I met, I met some, some great people over the years there. Uh, we have had ups and downs. Um, and, you know, it, I, I love my time there, but as most things do, you know, all things come to an end and I think it was the right time for me to move on. Um, it kind of, you know, I, I was there for, I think, four or five years. So um, I just, you know, it, it was one of them when, when QPR came on and I came here earlier, it was a, was a no-brainer for me, but... It's nothing against the fans of Fulham or, or or the club itself. It was more, you know, I didn't play as much as I wanted to. And, you know, it's different kind of manager, it had different kind of uh, thoughts. So um, that was kind of the, the reason. Mm. How difficult was it for you not to be playing, especially at a time when, you know, when we think about footballers, obviously that kind of, when you come into your late 20s, uh, 30, that's obviously supposed to be your, your peak years, right? But when you not being involved at all, imagine it's quite a tough time for you to, to be going through that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, what can you say? As a footballer, you always want to play. Uh, but it's, um, you know, the manager had different different thoughts. Uh, he had his way of thinking and probably I had mine. So um, there was, didn't, didn't work at the time. And then you have to see at solutions. And when I came to QPR, I thought, it worked out better for me and you know that's that was the main reason and I, I uh, but as I said you know I have no regrets I, I've always felt the, the love from the Fulham fans um, and it will always be a club that that's close to my heart you know and uh, you know it's it's no no uh, hard feelings from from my side. Yeah absolutely and obviously when that uh, QPR loan offer came around in in January did the and a West London rivalry between the two. Did that come into your mind at all? Was that something you had to consider when it when it came about? Uh, didn't to be honest with you, I didn't think too much about it. Um, I know obviously the, it's two rivals, but it's when you're in there, you, you I had a few chats with, with the gaffer here, and um, just the way he was talking about how he wants to play, how he wants the club to be working, I saw not only on the pitch, but off the pitch, the environment in the club and, you know, the full package of the club, I, I kind of got sold straight away. So I just thought it was a great time for me to come to, well, his plans of the club. And, you know, it, it turned out it, it worked out really well for, for both parts. Mm. Was the manager a big part in that? Because he really seems to have I mean, compared to when he took over at QPR, obviously that, that summer they had to get so many new players and I think it was 14 or 15 in the end. And then obviously last summer as well, it wasn't quite as bad, but he lost some some big players. Um, obviously, Eze going on to Crystal Palace. And then in January, he lost Brightside Samuel. So it seems like he's constantly had to, to rebuild the team. But it seems like now you're kind of in a situation where you've got a core of a team together that kind of established itself in January. And now as obviously with yourself coming in, Charlie Austin coming in, in Samfield from the from the loan spells. Um, seems like you're kind of on that upward trajectory now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the man manager was vital, you know, for, for my decision. I had a few chats with him, and as I said, I know what he's done earlier in his career and, and uh, the, the way of football he, he thinks. But also the, what I said earlier about the, the, the structure of the club, the fact that the plans of going forward and, and you know, the whole, the whole package of, the, of a football club um, kind of sold me in um, and I liked the way he was thinking there and, and as you said you know I've been speaking you know with, with less than everyone and it seems like the club are are uh, to be able to hold keep hold of the best players and uh, you know as you say get a full core um, of a team which is which is vital if you're going to have a chance to to succeed to, to bigger things, you have to have that stability in a team. And, and uh, that's my impression from the club now that, that they're trying to do. Mm. And obviously when we talk about not playing for, for a while a minute ago and when you fought, fast forward to now, obviously scoring that equaliser at, at Reading a couple of weeks ago, I mean, that's what it's all about, getting back playing, right? I mean, what a moment that was. 
Yeah, 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 of course. But what a difference the fans makes, to be honest with you. I think every footballer didn't... Well, I, for me personally, I, I didn't know how much impact it would have. But like you see when you, you play in... You, I think we played a, uh, the playoff final at the empty Wembley. You know, it's just... It's not the same. It's, mm. it's you know, it's... I wouldn't say demotivating, but it's, it's just not the same, you know. And now you, you have the... The fans back at home games, away games, you know, it's it just makes a such a difference, you know, for us players and that that feeling to can celebrate a goal or a three point or you know a late equalizer or whatever. It's it's just you know priceless. It's it's, it's just amazing, you know. And, and I think uh, every single player has has missed that. Yeah, it's so weird, right? I mean, I can't imagine what it was like to be playing in it, but obviously, I was lucky enough to still be going to games during the pandemic, obviously getting in the in the press bit, but it kind of seemed like it went so far the other way that we almost got used to playing in front of no fans. And then when the fans came back, it was like, it felt weird that they were there. I don't know if you kind of felt that too. And like you said, you just, you don't realise how much difference it makes because you, you kind of take it for granted. And then something like this happens and it all changes. Yeah, no, it's definitely like, it's, it's a game changer. You know, it's, it's um, for me, football is nothing without the fans. You know, it's, it's, uh, they're, they they play a vital part uh, in a in a season, so it's uh, it's lovely to have them back. Mm. I was just um, looking at your kind of career, just as a bit of um, research for for this interview, and I noticed um, you had a couple of seasons where you scored quite a lot of goals. Obviously, you scored I think thirteen goals in two thousand sixteen, seventeen, then you scored eight, I think, the following year. Do you feel like that kind of goal scoring um, is still in your game, or do you feel like your game's changed a little bit now, where you're maybe playing a little bit deeper than you than you were then? Obviously, like you were on Saturday. Yeah, no, I, I do think my games has changed. Uh, I think, as you said, I'm playing a bit deeper, uh, especially in this team as well now. When you have the likes of Chris, uh, Chris Willock and, and Ilias, you know, that's more typical to two number tens. Um, my kind of job is to to make the team play and get the ball into dangerous areas for them and, and to create, which is earlier probably like in. Celtic and early in the Fulham years as well, I, I played a bit more forward. Um, so yeah, definitely the, the game, my game has changed. It's more of a controlling role now. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just, as against Reading and a few times last year as well, you know, you, you, if you can time your runs into into the box as a midfielder, it's hard to pick up. So it's, uh, we, um, I'll, I'll try to, to adapt that also into, into my map new kind of new position here but um yeah it's you know you you would like to help the team with, with goals and assists but at the end of the day as long as you win I, I i don't really care who is scoring and stuff it's just that we we uh to pick up the three points is the most mm. important do you have a um a preference between those two roles and like how did you find it on saturday because obviously it was a bit different with kind of Ilias Chair and Chris Willock kind of playing alongside your midfield, but also getting forward quite a lot. You're the only kind of recognised actual central midfielder in the team, which I guess restricts how far forward um, you, you're allowed to go. Do you have any kind of a preference about what you like to play? Not really. You know, I think the the, the position I played on Saturday against Bristol is it's a, it's a position where you have to understand you, you're there to make the team play. You, you're probably not going to end up with... I don't know, three assists in a game and, and two goals, if you say that. But it's the, you make the team play and, you know, as I said earlier, you try to, to find uh, your f more forward players in, in dangerous positions. And um, I thought the whole team played really, really, really well on, on Saturday. It's one of the, probably the games where we... we maybe played the best but we didn't get anything out of it and, and in the end of the day that's what always matter uh, you can't have 80% possession and and, uh, and keep on losing 2-1 um, so you have to punish teams and we have to understand what we did when we conceded and goals and because championship has always been and I've been there a few years it's always the fine margins about win or lose so uh this uh, details there we just need to you know get right and then I think we, we're in a very good place. Mm. I mentioned those two guys there Elias Chair and Chris Willock obviously there's a lot of 
talented young players in the squad at the moment, but those two kind of jump out as the, as the most obvious examples. How have you found playing with them and how highly do you rate them? How high do you think they can, can go in the game? Unbelievable, both of them. Um, they're like, what can you say? Almost, yeah, they can reach wherever they want to. It's um, on the ball, it's top, top players. They create things for you. They, they make the team, you know, create chances. They can, if the game is quiet, they can suddenly do some magic and then then it uh, could be 1-0. So, uh, yeah, they can they can go wherever they want. And, uh, you know, I think if you start with Chrissy, I think even from when I was here the, in, in um, from jam to the summer, he's developed just in over the summer now. You know, he looks stronger, he looks fitter. He's, yeah, he, he just looks more dangerous in this game. And the same with Ilias, you know, it's, it's just like every time he has the ball, he feels something is going to happen. So... Um, they can they can go as far as they want and uh, you know but I do think QPR is a very good place for them to be at the moment with with this team now I think we can uh, can achieve uh, achieve good things. Mm, I can think of a lot of teams that kind of lack one player of that kind of sort of Willock and Chess. So to, to have two guys like that that can both do the things you just mentioned is a massive boost. I imagine. I mean, when you look at the squad overall this season, do you feel like? And obviously, I'm sure a lot of thing, you know, a lot of things have to go your way um, along the way of the season. Um, do you feel like the squad is at a level that it's capable of challenging for promotion if things go your way this year? Yeah, I think the squad is. You know, I think we have showed before that we can. Even last in the end of last year, we, we beat the so-called bigger teams that got promoted. But for me, it's about consistency. You know, it's. You can't go and win one and lose one. And, you know, you have to put in a, a, a good run of not only performances, but results as well. You know, it's, it's I think um, if you can stay in there and, you know, towards March, April, and ev anything can happen. I've seen it plenty of times, but you, you will have to understand that it's probably a boring say, but it's one game at a time in this league that they, Games come so quickly. You can't dwell about a loss or even a win or whatever. You just have to crack on to the next game. And, and if we get that into our heads and kind of get on the same similar run what we were on last year, um, I think we, we have the quality to be up there, but we have to understand what it takes to get up there. Mm. And you had that consistency at the start of the season, right? You didn't lose for the for the first few games. It's only now where you've got a couple of defeats where you're, you're kind of looking at it. But how do you kind of respond to those two defeats? Now you touched on it already. It pretty much seems to be about taking your chances and turning those possession that, that you had into, into goals. That seems to be the main takeaway from the, from the two defeats that you've had. Yeah, I think as well, I would be more worried if you didn't create anything. I think... Uh, both games we have lost, we have created loads of chances and um, it's just small, small, small margins that hasn't gone our way and it's, it's one of them you just have to understand that them things will come yeah, as long as you work hard in training for them things and, and, and focus on it so uh, I would be more worried if uh, we couldn't create something or we never looked like a team was going to score a goal so um, it's definitely still high, high. Uh, what can you say? Moral in the team, and um, we we are uh, we're confident that we can go and win every game we play. Mm. In terms of your kind of long term plan, have you given much like thought to that? Have you got anything else that you want to do in your career? Maybe go back and play in Norway or anything like that, or do you, do you just want to keep playing at QPR as long as they want you? Obviously, I know you've signed a three year deal, so you're here for the kind of foreseeable future now. Yeah, you know, you obviously start, you know, you're over 30 years old, so you kind of start thinking about what can happen after football. Uh, I'm going to start my coaching. Well, I have started it, so probably going to finish that when when the time is right. Um, we'll see maybe like a, to work within, you know, English football and on TV or I don't know, the, something like that, um, if that chance comes up. So there's... Um, I would, but I would definitely want to stay in in football because I think it's a it is a big part of my life. It has been for the last well, what can I say, 
15, 20 years. So it's uh, so I definitely want to stay in there. Um, but it's uh, at the moment, you know, it's it's just fun to play, and and I'm I'm at a club which is a good team and and a, and a great club that's been been driven well. So it's uh, I'm enjoying my my time here at the moment. Do we could see Stephanie Hansen, the manager, in the in the coming years? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. I don't know if my wife's going to be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, we will see. But I, I, some kind of role in, in like into football, I, I would love to have. I, I think uh, from what I've experienced through my career, I would love to kind of take that into a. Um, to learn, I don't know if it's younger players or if it's in into a club or, but I, I feel like I have, well, things things that I can learn away from my experience over the over the last uh, well over my whole career. Mm. It wasn't too long ago that you obviously announced your retirement from uh, international duty with Norway. I mean, I imagine that was quite a hard decision to make. I mean, you didn't fancy hanging on a few months to play a bit more with Erling Haaland. Yeah, I played with Erling, obviously, he's a top player and, and stuff, but I think it was the right time for me, to be honest. Um, there was a new coach coming in. It was a little bit of, you know, things happen off the pitch with the COVID and there was cancelled games and there was, uh, well, different kind of, of subject there. So um, I think it was the right right choice at the time, and you know I don't have no regrets with it. Um, I um, it also helps, you know, now when when you play in the championship, you get a little bit more rest and can uh, and hopefully that benefits over a long season. So I have no regrets whatsoever, uh, but I will always be a massive massive fan of the national team, and I will hope they they do well into the and qualify for tournaments because this, the squad they have is, is unbelievable uh, young talent talented players and now you even start to get like world superstars there so uh, they they will do well in the future so I'm, I wish them all the best but for myself I, I have uh, no regrets of, of quitting at the time I thought it was the right uh, it was the right choice at the time mm. I mean you kind of mentioned it there but it seems like a lot of um, the kind of talk around when a player retires from international duty is, like you said, around that kind of rest you get and not having to travel. Is that quite a big factor? And like when we have these international breaks, like how much, um, you know, we, we say it's a break, but for a lot of players, it's not really. And does that make like quite a big difference when you're trying to prolong your, your club level career? I do think it uh, helps a lot. Uh, well, I understand me right, but I do think it's, harder than what people think to go and travel over a long season even teams that's been playing tournaments and stuff you're talking about two weeks holidays maybe and you know it, I think the hard part is you go from one team to another and you have a manager that thinks differently to the club manager and the traveling and and you know, all that you don't really like recover well so uh, it's definitely a tough demand and I uh, well now is probably the first time where I've not travelled with the national team, and I I really benefited of it because I was starting to to you know I had some illness um, before that and stuff, so to get them a few days off there was vital for me. Um, so yeah, I, I do think it's very tough, but it's at the same time it's one of the biggest honor you can do is to represent your country. So. Um, I understand people that, you know, uh, that do it and, and it's a big, big honour. But um, for me, I've, I've done it now and I thought that the time was right for me to, to uh, yeah, say no and, and uh, go on with my career. 